Rogue Logic. This is the way. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Rogue Logic. Uh, tonight, I would actually like to just give you a review of uh, one of the best books that I have read in a long time. And uh, this review is going to be a non spoiler nice spoilers. review. So I'm going to tell you my uh, recommendation for the book and uh, my, my critique for the book without use the uh, spoiling any of the plot and uh i, I wouldn't do that because um it, th this is just an incredible incredible journey you go on through this book um this is going to be also the audible version and um i have uh lately been reading reading a great deal of my um books this way because of my schedule being very busy and uh doing some driving that you know, allows me to have the time in the car and it's very enjoyable. So the book that I'm going to tell you about tonight, and as a very small, quick note, um, I've, I've mentioned in the past, whether it be a movie, a television series, a book, it doesn't matter. When people are reviewing things, I, I, I tend to, I tend to not, especially, I tend to really dislike, say, award shows, specifically the ones that are by say, uh, like the Oscars, you know, I mean, these types of things are, they're voted upon by a certain group of people who have certain biases and things. And in the end, um, my critique or, uh, recommendation for a book is still just my opinion. With that being said, um, I have read an incredible amount of science fiction, fantasy, horror, and just an incredible amount of literature. And I, I think that, you know, I do have um, a certain level of uh, experience reading these things. So if that matters at all to anybody, I, I think I can deliver a, a review that will, um, that will be um, accurate and, and descriptive. And, uh, you know, but in the end, I'm just saying my own feelings are that I don't ever go by uh, what people say because, um, you know, I've liked some things a lot that people have really trashed. So anyway, getting to it. The book that I'm talking about is by uh, Stephen King. It is his latest novel called Fairy Tale. And um, all I, I, what I'd like to start out with is that uh, the audible version of this book and a lot of this has to do with uh, the reader, or I'm sorry, the, with the uh, speaker who um, narrated the book. And uh, his name is Seth Numerick. Now, I was not familiar with his, uh, or I thought I wasn't familiar with any of his uh, acting. I'm going to put a picture of him right up here. But, uh, and I will put a page down below, just a Wikipedia page, so you can see a few things he's been in. Once I reviewed it a little bit, I, uh, I found that I did see something that uh, I didn't really know at the time who he was, but he was in Turn, Washington Spies. I believe I watched most of the series. I think it was three, yes, it was uh, three seasons. Uh, it was really good. And um, I think I may have lost track of it at the end. But um, what I want to say about this is he, he was just so utterly I just don't want to forget anything here absolutely genius and and this man is definitely got incredible acting skills because as you go through the book now he reads every character in this book except one exception which I'll get to in a, in a moment and um, the the slight inflections of his voice uh, his his ability to just seamlessly slip from character to character. Now I'm sure there was some editing involved, but I mean you you cannot believe after you're just listening and as as everyone's mind does, you you listen or read a book and the imagery that comes up and you can see these characters. And not only is it King's great writing and descriptive ability, but this, this, um, I'm sorry again, Seth Numerick. Yeah. He just is 
utterly incredible. I mean, the the main protagonist, uh, Charlie, I can say that much without ruining anything, um, is a, uh, a high school uh, student. And I mean, you, you, you just hearing Seth read this is is like you you really can believe that this this kid is 17 years old. And then the other characters, which female characters, male characters, and I won't say any more than that because I don't want to ruin anything, is just incredible. So with that being said, the one note that I wanted to say was a very special um, bonus was that um, Stephen King had a couple short parts of himself reading uh, a character in the book that, again, I don't want to ruin anything. It's it's actually a real treat to have him do that. And the way that it was presented of of him was extremely clever and it, it was just really well done. So uh, that's that's what I would say about the audible part of the book. Listening to it was just a complete joy. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm actually just so glad that that's how I chose to read this book. Um, then, uh, what I would probably say is, um, I have read quite a few of Stephen King's books. I'm by no means have read them all. Um, definitely I've read, I think almost all of his collections of short stories, which I thought were incredible. Some of his best work. And, um, I've read, uh, it. The Shining, um, I read the Dark Tower series, which I think is incredible. And as a side note, one thing that I thought was just one of the best things that, that he could have done is when Stephen King wrote the Dark Tower series, melding together everything that he's written into one multiverse as, as you know, we like the Marvel Universe and DC and whatnot, but still it's... I would imagine that this is an aspect of that same universe, although he doesn't um, he doesn't breach that. And and but I would just imagine it's a part of it. And um, his uh, his protagonist, as I said, he's believable, he's vulnerable, strong, empathetic, and it's just a character that you 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 just grow with it with him as, as he goes throughout the story. And, um, you know, the other really successful parts of, let me just make sure I'm not forgetting anything here is the detail that, um, Stephen King delivers for this novel. And by details, I mean, you know, not the cliche ones. I mean, I, again, I don't want, I want this to be completely non spoiler. So, it's just that the references he uses are are things that you know you you really can see that he he took his time and didn't just put kind of cliche things in there and so some of what uh charlie is thinking some of the things he mentions are so true to life that the character is is completely believable and um someone that you want to see survive you want to see him thrive and you want to see what happens um so yeah that makes it just so much better that he's a realistic uh character multifaceted and always always growing um the other thing that um i wanted to say um okay that that's what it was now you you will all hear this at many times and you know i've tried to do this in my own writing and it's very very difficult um they always say write what you know now a lot of times people will say well i mean how do you do that when you're writing horror or science fiction or fantasy especially those three genres because you don't know it and the answer to that is very simple throughout this whole story you can see the um, personal aspects of the story that King puts into the characters. And he just weaves his real life experiences 
into this whole novel. And that, to me, is what makes an incredible book. Now, what I mean by that is, and again, it, it makes it difficult because I don't want to ruin anything, but one of the main characters goes through a very, very big ordeal in this story. And if you, if you look up Stephen King's biography, if you want to just check out some things, you can see what he pulled from, from his real life experiences. And this is what gives the whole thing. You can have a universe where things that are happening are obviously, you know, can't happen, don't happen in the real world, but it makes it that much more believable. So again, you know, I mean, the guy has basically given us a whole incredible amount of, of, uh, material throughout his career that, I mean, he's, it's just amazing. And this, this is no, uh, his, this, this attempt he takes at a new kind of, uh, part of his universe is, is incredible. So, uh, I wanted to say that. And then what I wanted to sum up with about this book is it delivers something that I always enjoy a lot when when it's when it's done in in the correct manner and basically when you read fairy tale you are going to get two stories instead of one and i can't say any more than that because it will ruin it but um what it does remind me of that was delivered to um delivered in the same manner was uh the book uh the devil in the white city now um, oof, I've got to quickly just look that up. Um, I haven't read it in a couple years, and that is, um... Could you get on with it, please, sometime this century? Oh my gosh, come on. Eric Larson, yes, and excellent, excellent writer as well, and I mean, just he's he's very, very adept at his craft. I will put a link for him and Stephen King down below. But why I mention that book is and this is not done the way Stephen King does it. But The Devil in the White City definitely has two narratives. And in that case, it's back and forth and back and forth. And yeah, there was one what both stories were incredible there's one more compelling story for me in uh the devil in the white city but the whole thing was amazing and now that i think about it i kind of want to reread it and give you a review of that because i've been waiting for years to see uh a movie or television series based on this and the last thing i had heard was that leonardo dicaprio was involved with this project and this is so many years ago now and i i hope he's still going to do it i hope he's going to star in it because if you've read the devil in the white city uh i yeah i can say that um that basically tells the story of the uh world's fair and this is what's going on at that time and i Right now, I don't want to say. I think it was 1897. I'm not sure. I will put that up here and um, check it for sure. But this World's Fair that we had, the amount of things that came out of that World's Fair that were, that just, you have no idea the common references today that we use every day that you don't realize came from that. And then on top of that, what I always found is I, I've been interested in things like that anyway, but many people really aren't familiar with H.H. H. Holmes and the murder house. And, you know, this is what the devil in the white city is about. I, I'm not ruining anything by saying that. And the way that the story is weaved together between the first having the, the world's fair develop and build and this incredibly insidious, horrible, evil serial killer and his uh, his methods and everything. And I, I always find it odd that a lot of people, you know, basically it's they think it's Jack the Ripper 
and then you move up to American serial killers that are, say, from, I don't know, the 40s and up. But, I mean, this guy was, was one of the original American real horrific serial killers. And, um, again, I just, it's an amazing book. But my point, back to my original point, the two stories that you get in fairy tale, not presented that same way, but in the sense that you you basically are getting a two for one deal on this, and both parts of it, and I I just I can't elaborate more because I don't want to ruin it, but it's amazing. It's a actually utterly amazing, and and what the Devil in the White City went back and forth with. This with a fairy tale, what's so so great about it is that you're beginning in one place, and the place that you end up. If if someone were to have tell tell have told you, say in the early parts of fairy tale, that this is where the book would be ending, you you'd just be like, I mean, you'd be blown away. So, um, overall, I, I, I don't know, however many gold stars you want to say, obviously I enjoyed the book. I think it is well worth reading. And as you know, since I read it audible style and listened to it, I can't recommend more, um, you doing it that way. I mean this, um, again, I have to say one more time, Seth, uh, ooh, I forgot his name. That's Seth Moonrick. Get with um, it. Hold on one second. Okay. Where did it go? I don't know. All right. Um, my point being, he does an excellent job of reading the book. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, perhaps I'll do a spoiler version of this and really delve into um, a lot of the plot points, the characters, and a lot of the great things that uh, Stephen King uh, created here for another incredible fantasy world for us and our enjoyment. With that, uh, be kind to one another, always be kind to animals, and peace. Meow, I think we're trapped here forever. That's a bit of a stretch, isn't it? If we get out of this, it'll be a miracle.